Okay, so we had a couple of slow moments there, but they are back on track. This here is a trench that will house the electricity. Hello. This trench was dug so that we can put the electrical wires in here underground and there will be no issues. So today's improvements not be, might not be all that obvious to you, but let me show you. First off, we have a light. Second, we have electricity. These two outlets are going to provide power for our chick brooders. And there's a ceiling fan with a light. And for some reason, it has a remote control. And the light for above the sink. And a light in the chicken coop itself. And there are two electrical outlets in the meat bird room too, just in case. This may look like a prison yard, but it's a chicken yard. The walls have to be this tall because mongoose can climb up any wire. They can destroy any wire just by ripping it open. So they won't be able to climb up these walls and also on the bottom underneath, they won't be able to get through there either which is why we put this cement curb eight inches down below so there's no chance of a mongoose or a rat getting through. And this yard is going to provide plenty of space for them to roam around and scratch for bugs. This roofing tin is six feet tall. All right, you guys, so I just got home from work and Scott said that I should make my way up here because there was a lot of work done. So let's check it out. In the yard, the progress is incredible. This whole area back here, my son has been filling in so that the water level can't, you know, it doesn't turn into a big swamp in here and it just flows out. So that is working great so far. And then they put in another bracing beam to keep it all nice and strong. And here, there are roosting bars. We're calling them chicken trees. We might end up more than likely putting in more, um, more roosting bars because that's not quite enough for all the chickens that we have. But those are pretty cool. And then today they built the nesting boxes and those are gonna go along this wall right here. And coming out over here, we have our plumbing hookup. That's where our sink is gonna go and our countertops. This is just primered so far, it's gonna get painted. Then over here, this new table is where the chick boxes are gonna go. Here I will insert a little clip of what those are looking like so far. And the chick boxes will sit on here, but there's plenty of space. They're not gonna take up the whole thing. So they will be sitting up high and safe. One more very cool thing. We have electricity. So when I got home, Scott was asking what colors I wanted these spots because they need to be repainted anyways. And we are just going to be using paint we already have. There's no sense in going out and buying more paint when we already have plenty of colors from this project, other projects, the inside of our house, we still have leftover paint and it's really good quality paint too. So what I was thinking is the wall up and down, I'm gonna do uh, purple and then this is going to be green, the same green as the outside of this building. And then this one purple and this one green. The nesting boxes, green. On the outside, our trench is starting to get filled in, which is very nice. So we have our water in, water out, and our electric electricity. This summer, my son has made very good friends with this wheelbarrow. He's done all this digging and it's great. So this got filled in for the most part, not quite halfway down and it'll just continue all the way. Okay, so that's today's update. I am super stoked. Each day we're getting closer and closer to putting these ladies in their new home.
Wow, we are finally done. The last little bit of paint is dry, so let's go ahead and take a look inside. I know that you're curious, I know that you're strong, but life can be furious and things can go wrong. You go, you go, we're better off tomorrow, but who knows, who knows, if we get joy or sorrow. Stay true to the fire in your heart and your soul. Don't trench your desire in what you can't control. We fly, we fly, try so hard together and we might, we might, lost but not forever. There's things in life you simply need to know Like sun and rain and trust in letting go It takes a bit of suffering It takes a Before you make it safe And super cool, we were able to repurpose doors We were able to repurpose this door And this door Uh, I need to wash that, sorry Speaking of doors, these doors were built by our very good friend, Chris. He came over and he built these doors for us just this past week. They are superb. So now I'm thinking it is time to go figure out how to get the chickens from here to there. Takes a bit of suffering, sleepless nights and wandering before you make it safely to the end, the end, the end. And if you ever wonder, there is nothing wrong with a little thunder. There's things in life you simply need to know about sun and rain and trust in letting go. It takes a bit of suffering, sleepless nights and wandering Before you make it safely to the end, the end There's things in life you simply need to know I don't think that you can see her, but in the words of Jessica Sowards, Happy birthday, little guy. you guys today is the day that we've all been waiting for the chickens are moved in everything is good and it's time to check it out but first please excuse the green paint in my hair it's a good paint it doesn't want to come out it does not come out it's not a flower it's paint it has been an exhausting couple of months but it is finally done we are finally here the chickens are moved in and I couldn't be happier. Before we get started on the grand tour of the final product, well, as much of a final product as you can get being that it is a new construction, there's always leftovers. But we are in our final stage and it is fantastic. I just wanna take this moment and thank the people who built this chicken coop. I have a full-time job, so I was not here to help with the majority of it. I wanna start off by thanking my sweetheart, Scott. Without him, none of this chicken coop would be even close to possible. In addition to Scott, I would like to go ahead and just take this moment to thank my son, Israel, Scott's son, Tahigua, and our friends, Tyler, Jimmy, Chris, and Robert. Without them, this wouldn't be built. If you guys are watching this, thank you. Just a quick side note here. Grub Terra sent me this package of soldier fly larvae. So 
I thought it was a good time on the new day for the new chickens to go ahead and give them a treat real quick. See how they like it. Dead bugs. I think it's safe to say they like their new bugs. Thank you to Grub Terra for providing them with a little treat. Well, on our grand tour, we might as well go ahead and start right here in the yard. It hasn't changed much since last time you guys saw it. Um, in fact, it hasn't changed at all. I just added the water bucket and we're gonna come up with a better water system than that at some point, but that'll do for now. This is hopefully completely mongoose proof. This, this concrete goes eight inches down below and it goes the metal goes six feet up in the air. I'm hoping that nothing can get in here. And we have our chicken trees. They are all installed, ready to go. And he ended up putting a few extra roosts in too at the last minute just yesterday. Um, I didn't get a chance to check them out when they came in last night to see where they slept, but probably, hopefully, in their new roosts also known as a chicken tree. They have laid already today in their boxes. I've collected nine eggs already today. And because of those stinky mongoose that steals them all the time, usually I only get one, two eggs a day. It didn't take them long to figure out where I wanted them to put these. Underneath here, I've got a couple shelves. I can put our extra chick feeders and waterers, things like that on both sides, which is awesome. Repurposed granite countertops. I think they fit in quite nicely. And the sink with water. How easy is it gonna be to keep everything nice and clean? We've got a couple of We've got a couple of uh, custom made boxes to keep our feed bags in keep the rodents out. And in here, we have our juvenile chickens at the moment. Of course, they're all gonna huddle up because I came in here and they just moved about an hour ago. So they're probably not the happiest campers at the moment. That's okay. But they have this nice big area to hang out. Their feed and their water is right here, easy peasy. And in the future, we're gonna use this to raise up our meat birds as well, because meat birds, they just don't really like to move around much, but this is a nice big space for them as well. These guys, I'm gonna keep two of each. Well, there's three of the uh, speckled Sussex, but the um, white Jersey Giants, 10 of those are gonna be sold and I'm just gonna keep two. And then our flock is gonna be complete once these guys make it into the run with the other big chickens. And there's a couple um, buff brahmas in there too. And as we move over here into this corner, we've got our chick box brooders, which hopefully I won't use them for a little while because we've already done a lot of chicks lately. And I tell you, I'm done with chicks for right now. But when it's time, these are gonna come in handy. Each one is made out of plexiglass on the top and on the side. I don't think you can see very well on the air holes that were drilled in on the camera, but they're there, I promise, lots of them. And a nice top so I can reach in and clean them out nice and easy. Feed them and water them. There's two so that we can have two sets of chicks, whether the same age or they need to be separated a little bit because of their age, we have options. And also right behind here, there's an outlet for each one to have its own brooder. So we will be able to put a warmer in here as well to keep the chicks nice and toasty. And of course we have our shelving. This shelf is strong enough to hold anything that I want it to. Right now we've just got a little bit, a lot of it of straw and it'll just be a nice, clean, open storage space. 
you're wondering what that box is, that's the box that I use to transport chickens. <laughs> so that's its new home. Well, it might look like a barn in here, but that's essentially what it is. I think the chicks inside are pretty happy. I can hear them running around. I am so excited and it has been a long time coming. So to see this and its final product, I am so stoked. I think it's going to be very, very useful. There are There was so much thought and so much teamwork, honestly, that went into this project. In the beginning, did I think I would have plumbing? No. Electricity? Absolutely not. But you know what? This is what it turned into, and I am absolutely over the moon about it. Hopefully, we were able to give you guys some ideas about how building your chicken coop in the future or readjusting your chicken coop can help things function and be more streamlined, I guess so that you take in each function of your chicken coop when you are trying to build or repurpose your chicken coop. I have a feeling like this is going to work out mighty fine. Thank you for joining me today on the Hamakua Homestead. I'll see you again soon.